Okay, good evening, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, from Hive World on July the 13th, we are starting just a few minutes early here because we've got some rain rolling in, so we want to get as much of the content covered as we possibly could in the time that's left uh, here before the rain forces me to move the uh, computer here, or the equipment, I should say, moves, um, forces them to move the equipment so it doesn't get wet. Um, but as you can see behind my head, grey. So not a lot to report as far as improvement in the weather since we were here last Monday night, uh, unfortunately. Um, we have had a couple of days of really, really good uh, sunshine and warmth, and we've had some uh, decent gains on those two days, about four, five, six pounds of uh, honey. Um, so we're doing okay, but the reality of huge amounts of honey coming into the hives or any specific progress is eluding us, eluding us. So we're going to actually get a uh, get a go, uh, get going here, <clears throat> and we're going to open up our uh, hive that we established from a nucleus on uh, May Long weekend. We'll take a look inside here and see what we've got uh, going on. Uh, so just to recap from last time, if you recall, we actually. Um, Oh, look, that's interesting, isn't it? So inside we've got all kinds of bees in the lid. That's a good sign. I'm just falling out all over the floor here, so that's not great. But uh, if you remember from last time, we had... Um, been looking at the top. And there wasn't too much going on. So, yeah, this is what we can tell you for sure. Is that these bees in a week have had a massive hatch. And uh, <laughs> the hive is now very, very full indeed. Oh, and now I just uh, dropped half of my bees all over the front of the hive. So down inside this hive, I think what we can see here is, is that they are, uh, they've done really well. The uh, population has really, really exploded. I'm just going to add a little uh, smoke here, these guys. There we go. And I'm looking down inside here and I'm seeing some really, really, really decent frames, nicely drawn out. Uh, um, yeah, got honey in there. I'm drawing that guy out, that's new. Another one that's pretty much completely filled with honey. Honey and pollen. And another one that they're uh, they're drawing out here. I'm not very happy with me, so we're not, we're not going to have too much time. But what what we're interested to know is is how they're doing. Okay, so taking a look, and we see pollen. We see pollen, and uh, but mostly, overall, the overriding um, thing here is that these guys have just had a, a massive, massive population increase, just at perfect timing, really, for the honey flow. So. We're going to have these guys actually build some jars full of honey. And we're going to put that on next week. Um, but what we're going to do this week is we're going to let these bees develop more and get even more going on. Yeah, it's completely filled with honey. So this top box is now completely filled with honey, ready to leave here for winter time. I'm drawing out this frame. And this frame, yeah, the queen's most likely downstairs. So... What we're going to do is we're going to put on the second box and we're going to add um, eight empty frames. And then uh, in two weeks' time, we're going to add the jar hive and we're going to shake down all of the bees from the third box down into the other two boxes and then add the jar hive. And uh, the rest of my boxes are... The rest of my boxes are actually... Uh, 
in my other location. So I'll just put the lid back on now so they don't get too cold. So that's a good box of bees. Shake those bees out. Okay. And then we'll take you guys around to the next two hives here, like we did uh, last week. So here's our um, here's our uh, flow frame now. I'm going to just give you a, take you for a second here to see the windows on the side. So what we've done in uh, in compressing these bees and in, down into one box like we did last week, um, basically we've forced them to take a take a look at the flow frame. And if I open the side window there, you can see that this is completely filled with bees. And inside there, I can see them working on filling up wax everywhere. Now it is raining a bit, and I'm going to uh, open the lid here so you can see what we've got going on. You can see that uh, our flow frame, flow hive, flow super is uh, completely filled with bees. Now for the purpose of the video, I'm going to do something I wouldn't normally do. And I'm actually going to pull out one of these sensor frames with my hive tool, just so that we can take a look. And uh, folks, if you have weather like we've got here, just be aware that this is just... Uh, the worst beekeeping weather. Let's have a little more smoke here. Windy, rainy, cold. <laughs> but it's the way it is, so we'll do what we've got to do here. There we go. bit of an effort but it's uh, important. Now as I look down here I see all kinds of honey that the bees have already started to add into the cells. I don't know if you can see that but they're clearing it out nicely, they're cleaning it out nicely and they're starting to add wax to it. And if I look on the other side again I, I don't see I really don't see where the queen is laying. She's, she's not laying in here at all, but the bees are fixing it all up really good and adding wax to it. And uh, as I look down inside here, I can see just bees working on every single flow frame. I'll just take out another one here. I'm getting quite a angry response, so we'll try and be as quick as we can and as judicious as we can with some, with some smoke. Yeah, again, the bees are doing you know, really quite well. Cleaning it up, making it nice, and um, filling it with honey. So we'll put that back together and we'll be back here next week and we'll take a look how much production is going on here. What I will tell you is, is that on the really hot day that we had just recently here, we noticed that the bees were hanging out the front quite considerably with this hive. Um, not really like they are now here. Um, a little more, much more than that. Quite a, quite a big beard out of the front of the hive. So what we're actually going to do tonight is we're going to add some clustering space at the bottom 
and in doing so it's going to give me a chance to crack these boxes open and just take a look at what we've got going on in between the two boxes in case me putting them in too small of a space has introduced an idea of swarming to them. I'm just going to I'm going to crack these two boxes here. Let's put that on the side. And then I'm just going to lift this guy up from the front, see what we got underneath. Nope, I don't see anything, but I do see a bunch of rain that's just started to come down. So, if your bees are hanging out the front, you don't seem to have enough space, but you really want them to build some honey, add some clustering space to the bottom of the hive. The bees won't necessarily use it for honey, or for building, or for anything particularly useful, apart from thanking the beekeeper for the space they were just provided, that they don't have to hang out the front on a hot day. They can be useful inside. Okay, so it's raining pretty good here. I'm sorry if you can't hear very well. But we'll keep going as long as we can uh, get some cooperation from the bees. And I'll set the computer here the top of the hive we were just looking at and uh, we'll take a look at the next hive here and see what sort of production if any we've got and this hive here yeah as I said easy to cancel tonight but you know uh, the reality of this year, definitely not been the greatest for cooperative weather in the early season. And again, if I take a look in here, you know, not really. Good box of bees. Some lovely honey starting to come up. You can see the honey between the boxes starting to come up here. But uh, again, if we, <laughs> if we lift them out like we did last week, you know, the bees are not really not really working on these frames. They, they've, they've filled their two boxes full of honey and now we've got this new honey that's starting to go in um, into these upper frames, which is great. I mean, it's great news. So if we've got a good flow on by the time we come next time, we know the honey's here now. It's come to the top of the box. You can see it in the brace comb between the boxes. We'll, um, we'll bring a comb, we'll bring another box like this next time but with foundation, a uh, beeswax foundation with no wires, and we're going to get the bees to build uh, a box of comb honey for us on this hive as well. So we've got some good production, generally speaking. Uh, the bees are active. We know, the, we know the populations are there in all of these three hives now, very, very large populations of bees. Now we just got to get this next six to seven weeks uh, to the end of August to actually work for us really well. So thank you for joining us on this very un unpredictable Monday evening in July, August, uh, July 13th. If you have questions, type them into the chat and we'll see if we can do a little question and answer session. And I'm going to take this computer inside with my guys because it is wet. And we'll come back and put a box in the place. Make sure they've got some room to work.
Okay, so we got um, Jeremy asking, is it possible to build a new hive with two frames of brood and bees from one hive, as well as two frames of brood from a separate hive and a new introduce a new queen? Absolutely. Yeah, really great option, Jeremy. And this is a really good time to do it. If you've got a hive that isn't going to make it for this summer, as far as making a, product, a bunch of um, a bunch of uh, for, um, honey, then use what you've got to create maybe a couple of nukes. It's a, it's a really good option. Uh, or even break it down further. Um, but yeah, a couple of frames of brood. Uh, but just make sure they get you know looked after because they're going to need to make sure they build up um, in time for winter time. Uh, Mike says you don't seem to stress ventilation much this year. Is it because of the so cool? So uh, thanks, Mike. Twofold reason. Uh, firstly, we are using more. We, we are definitely seeing better results with screens up at the top. Certainly not this year. Um, uh, you're welcome, Jeremy. Glad to help. Uh, hi, Kaz. So canola does crystallize quickly, especially with this cooler weather. It does crystallize quickly in the hive. Um, as far as it not being good for the bees to eat in the winter, I, I, I have not found that to be necessarily the case. There's a lot of, there's a lot of, uh, emotions that, um, join with, uh, a spring inspection of bees. And, um, you know, it's very hard in reflection to say, oh, I didn't treat a varroa and, you know, I didn't do what I was supposed to do and I didn't feed properly in the fall. Those are things, those are hard things to say against yourself. Uh, what's easy to say is, oh, the, the bees had mites because you can't see them anyway. They're already dead. Uh, it's easy to say uh, the honey crystallized in the cell so the bees couldn't use it. Um, it, 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 it hasn't made a difference for us as far as we know. Um, to overwinter bees successfully. We've, we've successfully overwintered bees on uh, two boxes where the bo second box is predominantly drawn comb. So, no, I, I wouldn't say necessarily it, it makes the bees any, it makes it any harder uh, for the bees. So thank you for joining folks. I know that was uh, definitely very much a whistle stop uh, through the hives with the rain that we were having. But uh, we can confirm we do have absolutely fantastic uh, volumes of bees in the hives um, and hope you guys do too. Uh, we just need some decent weather now so the bees can actually leave the hive and come back. Our larger hive that we inspected last, um, actually uh, it was it was becoming light on source so we knew that the first 15 to 20 pounds of honey would end up going into the bottom and the second box and that's fine because we've still got a couple of we've still got a couple of um, weeks or if not a couple of months to go yet before honey stops coming into the hive. So we know we're going to get some, you know, that we're going to get some uh, some decent honey coming in on that hive. We're just going to make sure that we've got the space for them to do so. Uh, so Christy says, how do I tell when the dearth has happened? So it's a great question. Um, so dearth is not necessarily an event. It's accumulation of events. Um, I, I, so I would say that um, a, a dearth, if we get rain three days in a row, you're going to put the bees into a dearth situation and that's when we uh, very much stress that you need to feed uh, more than three days in a row. You know, we need to make sure we've got a pail feeder ready to quickly put on. Um, uh, so, but the typical dearth that you may be referring to is the early summer dearth after the dandelion. Uh, and so long as you've got a good carpet now everywhere around you of uh, the white clover, the Dutch clover, yeah, you're past the dirt. The, the bees are going to be able to be gathering enough in a good flying day. But if we have three or more flying days in a row, be aware that those bees are going to start to significantly uh, chew down on the stores inside the hive. Uh, and that takes time to replenish before the bees have more surpluses to go upstairs for the beekeeper to take off. So, uh, so be aware that, uh, you know, the, the, Early summer dirt we referred to shouldn't overcloud the fact that we could have really, really unfortunate weather in July where the bees, you know, perhaps can't fly for two or three days. It doesn't typically happen, but it, it could. 
Uh, and good for Ray. We are hearing some really good reports from around the province. Um, we uh, we have bees in uh, various very uh, various diverse areas of Alberta, and um, it, some definitely are much much more prolific than they are down here in the Edmonton, Strathcona, Beaver County area, uh, Sturgeon County, uh, like Saint Anne County, going up into the northwest towards the Peace Country, seem to definitely be uh, uh, doing well. Um, so, um, still early days. It's only the 13th of July. We've, we've still got a good, you know, five, six weeks to go yet before we can really say, you know, if anything's average or above average. Um, but uh, keep your eye on the, on the boxes. Uh, remember that a, a two or three good flying days um, can pretty much plug one super full with nectar. Not very often that happens, but it can happen. But make sure you've got room. And for those of you who are, no, are near canola, make sure your bees have got a lot of room uh, upstairs for them to be able to move that nectar because there is um, there is a there is a trigger with canola to swarm if the bees believe they don't have enough room to store the bounty that they know they have access to. We'll be here for a couple more moment, more minutes for questions. Otherwise, we're going to pack it in and uh, get out of here before we get stuck with the truck. <laughs> and the rain. Uh, Larry asks, uh, you got five nukes this season, four are doing well and one is not. Is it too late to give them a new queen or more brood? No, absolutely not. If you've got one particular hive that's doing very, very well, uh, definitely make a recommendation to take out a frame of cat brood and a frame of eggs and put them into your other hive. And if they indeed are not uh, queen right, they'll make themselves queen right. Um, otherwise, if they are queen right and you just haven't seen the new virgin queen for whatever reason, um, that brood and those eggs will really help boost the whole situation along. Thanks for joining, folks. And uh, we um, hope to uh, perhaps have a little diversion from the normal schedule over the next three weeks. Um, our commercial honey extraction plant has now uh, is now underway. Uh, sorry, is now set up and, and about to ready to roll. Uh, we may well take you. Um, we may well take you there one night, as long as we can get our uh, internet a little more uh, reliable than it has been. And then um, hopefully we can start to talk about a little more honey coming into the hives over the next two three weeks. Thank you all. And uh, any questions, anything else you'd like to discuss in more detail, you're more than welcome to email info at hiveworld.ca. We'd also like to uh, make you aware of the fact that the buy, uh, just a message from our marketing folks, that the buy to get one free auto extract supers uh, promotion is still on until the end of the month, which we extended. And um, we are down now to uh, our last acceptance and one of the things is is that you, you you need to know it's very important to know when you lost the queen uh, approximately the date because if you don't know that it could well be that you have a situation where your queen uh, you, the queen you're trying to introduce you're trying to introduce them into uh, in, into a hive where the average age is too old the bees the average age of the bees is too old to take care of her uh, and so what that means is is, is that um, the high uh, the high phalangeal glands uh, of the bees are too um, the bees are too old for them to work properly to be able to feed the queen properly, and so they 
simply kill her as soon as she comes out of the cage. It, it's not that they're not accepting her. It, um, and I like to make this differentiation for everybody. It's not that the Queen, that the Bees are not accepting her. It's that they can't accept her. So if you're going to add a Queen, we're trying to encourage people to always add a frame of cat brood from another hive. Of course, make sure the Queen's not on it from the other hive. And if you can add a frame of eggs, it's going to allow the bees to do two things. It's going to allow them to get onto the eggs and feed them and keep them busy. And it's also going to allow the cat brood to emerge and gradually help the queen along. And it will also dramatically bring the average age of the hive down so you get that guaranteed queen acceptance. Folks, and again, thank you from Hive World. Uh, we do appreciate your patience with us this, this year. What a crazy year it has been. But it looks like we do have some indications of a, of a good season. And um, hope things go well for everyone. Hope uh, the sun shines a little more in the next week than it has this previous week. Thank you again and good night.